kingdom of light. We don't have to live under bondage anymore. We can live in light. We live in life. Hallelujah. Thank you for your light. Thank you for your love in the name of Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The man of God has come in. Thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you for the word that's coming forth tonight in the name of Jesus. We receive it. We're excited, Father. We're excited in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bring it forth, Father. Bring it forth, Father. Bring it forth, Lord. Bring it forth, Lord. We're receiving in the name of Jesus. Hungry, hungry, thirsty. Hungry, hungry, thirsty in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. We're in your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Thrashikinabara. Tandarabaha shokotrolingrebehi shikingrama. Tandarabaha shorabaha tatarabaha shatarabaha. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, what an honor and a privilege it is to be gathered together today to just experience your greater glory in the, in the earth. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Great grace, Lord, great grace. Great grace, great grace. Glory, show us your glory, Lord. Show us your glory. Unveil your truth, Lord. Greater power, greater presence. Greater goodness. Oh, ha shata I take a shikupa. Ila and oh, shata I keko. E shama iti iti boata a shoko and data. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, shihe ho baha ha ti ke ego ata. Jesus, Jesus. Hmm, baha he ho baha. Jesus, Jesus, manifestations of your glory, of your goodness, of your power, of your presence, manifestations of your power. Oh, thank you, Jesus, of your glory, Lord. Boha, your presence. It's time, it's time, it's time. It's time, it's time, it's time. Mm. The vine is ripe unto harvest. Put in the sickle. Harvest time, harvest time, harvest time. Mm. Harvest time, harvest time, harvest time. Get out there and work the field. Get out there and work the field. Gather up the spoils that have been that have been prepared for you. Mm. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Harvest time, it's harvest time, it's harvest time. It's harvest time, it's harvest time. Oh, shiheboa taha, tikeko. Bahanda he shoa taha. Ishahando so ishe koma ati ke ebuata. Hmm. Aha, the time of the season is now. The time of the season is now. The time of the season is now. I have prepared a banqueting table for you. Baha she hikobuata la baha. Now is your time to feast at my table. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Hmm.
Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Receive what I have purpose for you to have. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, um, you, can, you can be seated if you want to. You don't have to. The anointing of God in the house, sometimes you just don't want to sit down. And that's okay with me. It don't bother me one bit. You know, the, um, I grew up, um, I can say this about my, my uh, heritage phys- physically. I grew up in a, in a type of family that worked. You worked. Man don't work, you don't eat. And you get out and you got to get things done. I've worked the fields. I've, I've, I've chopped cotton and I've belled hay and I've done what you have to do when you have to do it. And uh, harvest time, it's really important to realize. Harvest time's not a time for you to sit on your hands and just look around about what's going on. Harvest time is the hardest working time of a farmer's season. But, oh, that, that, man, that jumped big on the inside of me when I said that. Yeah. And you got to recognize the times and the seasons. We have, to, we have to recognize the times and the seasons in our lives. And harvest time is a time where you're more, you're more busy about your father's business than you ever have been before. Come on. Come on. It's important to recognize it because if you don't, it'll pass you by. Oh, yes, sir. Come on. Come on, Pastor. It's a season. Yes. There's seasons in our lives and you have to grasp hold of the season, embrace the season that you're in. Yes, Part of it, as we were just praying, and Joseph, thank you for being obedient as always, but sensitive to the Holy Ghost. I love that about Joseph. He's always sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You know, as we're praying and we're interceding, we're not just coming in here playing, playing church to pray. Come on, come on. And so, you know, there's some things happening in our society today. And... Uh, I believe what I was seeing as we were talking about that, part of the harvest and because of some things that have taken place in our government and in our country, it's, it's put us in a position to step into a greater harvest than we could have any other time. You know, when the Bible talks about that in the latter days, the last days, where the reaper is going to overtake the sower. You know, when there's a a constant uh, manifestation of the glory of God, there's things that have to get in place in order for that to take place. Uh, Dick Rubin would always say, when the pattern's right, the glory will fall. And I've been asking the Lord, I've been asking the Lord, you know, help us to get the pattern right. Even in my personal life, I want to make sure that I'm in position to receive what it is that God has for me. The blessings, the blessings don't just plop off. They're, they're there for a reason. God pours out his anointing and pours out his blessing and pours out his glory for purpose. Amen. For a purpose. And you and I have got to recognize the purpose behind what God is doing. Is he's pouring it out on those who will be willing to distribute it the way he's intended for you to distribute it. I'm telling you, man, there's things, you know, there's things that God's doing in your life right now that you'll want to do that he'll have ready for you as soon as you get, as soon as it's time for you to do it. And we had had an experience today. The Lord put something on my heart and immediately, I'm talking about immediately, the finance, immediately the finances were there. That weren't there before I purposed before he even talked to me about that. Boom. That fast. But I knew that the Lord wanted me to do something and he, he brought the finances there quickly. I know I'm talking about a few dollars. Come on. And, and what I'm, what I'm, what am I, what am I, I I'm, I'm priming your pump right now. Because God wants to get the flow going. You know, see you ever, that, I don't know if y'all ever, Y'all have already seen it on TV, you know, when they're sitting there and they're doing this and waiting for the water to come out the wind. They just keep pumping. That's, pri- that's called priming the pump, you know. And that takes work to do that, you know. 
And so there's, it's kind of like a okay, more modern day translation for you here. You ever try to start your lawnmower and you didn't pump that little button down there? That's priming the pump. You know what I'm saying? You're priming the pump. What are you doing? You're, re, you're, you're releasing the fluid that it needs in order for it to get the start that you want. In order to do what it is that you're trying to do. So there's times in your lives where you and I got to prime the pump. And you're priming the pump for us here, Joseph, for this to come forth tonight. And this has nothing that well, has everything to do with my message. But, it, but it's, you know, it wasn't what I thought my, we would start off like. And so, but that's good. Amen. It's prime your pump, me. It's time to prime your pump. Boy, you got harvest coming, man. Goodness gracious. It's time. But, it, but it's important for us to recognize harvest time's a time to be diligent about your father's business. Be diligent about what it is that God's placed in your heart. Press in and prayer and time and, and, and whatever it is that God's asking you to do. Get diligent about what he's asking you to do. Because I believe he wants to manifest his glory like you've never seen in your life before where your heart's desires are concerned. But you and I have to stay steadily active in activating what he is desiring to put into our lives. Amen? You receive that tonight? That's good. All right. So Pastor Justin has been ministering on righteousness and righteousness, understanding your righteousness as a child of God and the mindset that you have to have in order for you to walk and the righteousness that God created for us. OK, it's, it's a really important because uh, I believe too many people in the body of Christ in our body are suffering, but they don't need to be suffering. And so much of it comes from a, a condemnation uh, mentality rather than a righteousness mentality. Uh, th th they don't have an understanding of what Jesus did for them on the cross that has already provided for everything that they're going to do in their life. Okay, I, I believe that. And, and I, some of you are looking at me like that. What are you talking about, Pastor Rick? Because there's a revelation that you have to walk in where righteousness is concerned. Because I, can, I grew up in a society where, you know, you're just, your righteousness is as filthy rags. Right. And, and the, the bull. Right. My, well, let me say this way. My righteousness, my, my, my doing things right is as filthy rags. But my righteousness in Christ Jesus Amen. made me just like Jesus Amen. and keeps me just like Jesus. Yes. Yes. Come on. Yes. If it's good enough to save you, it's good enough to keep you. Yes. Right. Come on, grab it. You and I have got to remind ourselves constantly because there's a goosebump thief sitting outside these doors. There's a real devil that wants you to think that you're not worthy to receive what God has for you. He is the, he is the condemner. He's the accuser of the brethren. So if there's any accusations coming against you in your life, it's not from God. Oh, I, it is not from God. God, he says, I, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Jesus Paid for you and I to be holy, to be righteous, to be set apart, consecrated as unto God. And when God looks at you, when God looks at me, he sees me whole. He sees me complete. He sees me through the blood of Jesus that Jesus shed on that cross for me. He doesn't see Ricky anymore. He sees Jesus and he sees Jesus in Ricky. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have, have to have a revelation that you are just as righteous as Jesus. Come on. If you're going to walk in the promises of God, if you're going to reap the harvest that we're talking about, you're going to have to have total confidence that what Jesus did on the cross, and what Jesus did by going to the grave, what Jesus did with his resurrection power that he brought, that brought him back to life, that's the same thing that's on the inside of you and me. Yes. Christ in me, Christ in you, the hope of glory. My righteousness is not in my, what I do. My righteousness in who, is in whom I have believed. My righteousness is in the faith that I have in what Jesus did on the cross more than what I can do in my faith. I could not 
earn my way to heaven. You and I both know that. For it's by grace that we have been saved through what? Faith. Through what? Faith. Well, you know what? You don't understand. No, through faith. You have more faith in what you've done than what Jesus has done. If you're going to talk to me like that. That's just a reality check. Where is your faith? Your faith will tell us where you, where you are in your righteousness. It'll tell us. You, it doesn't take long. All we have to do is listen to you talk for a few minutes. Yeah, I know, but. Is that the problem? You got the butt in the way. All right? That butt changes everything that we just said. Yeah. Really? You, and you know what? This is what's so important. You and I have to recognize that it doesn't just stick with us like that. What do I mean by that? You know what? There's some days you feel like the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and you feel like there's nothing you can't do. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And you just, come on, somebody wants some of this. You know what I'm saying? You've got that kind of mentality going on in your life. But then there's other days when you messed up and you're just kicking yourself. Oh, my goodness. So you don't feel like God's going to do nothing for you because of everything that you did. What changed? Come on. You. God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what's changed more than anything is your mentality towards what's going on in your life. You're you're more thought-provoking towards what you're doing than what Jesus has already done. He is all... This is going to... If you have any religious tradition, it's going to just flip you out right now. Okay? Because he's already paid for any sin that you'll ever do. He's already, it's already, it's already paid for. It's already paid for. And when you have a revelation of who he is in you, you won't want to sin anymore. This, it doesn't even make any sense to you to do that stuff anymore. When you have a true revelation of who's in you. Come on. You and I have got to fight the good fight of faith where the righteousness of God is concerned in our lives. It's a fight. But a good fight's the fight you win. And the fight you win is when you sit there and you look at them like, hmm. Yeah. Didn't, didn't, oh, didn't flinch me a bit. Yeah. Come on. Right. Yeah, I love that. There's guys, I used, to, I, I coached, and, and when I got into a situation, for instance, that uh, we were in a tight game, for instance, and I needed to go to a go-to person in the game. It didn't take me long to figure out who was my go-to person because they were either looking at me like, I don't know how in the world we're going to get this, or there's one over there going, I got this mentality like, give me the ball, coach. I will do whatever I have to do to make sure we don't lose this game. Come on, you know what I'm saying? That's the person you want the ball in the hands of, right? And see, you got to recognize you cannot look at it like, I'm going to lose. No, you got to recognize you can't not lose. If God be for you, who can be against you? Right? Come on. He's already promised us the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. There is no temptation, there is no test, there is no trial that's common to man that God has not already provided a way out for. He's promised you the victory in every area of your life. What you've got to get out of the way is you. Your old self. Come on. What you can do. Get yourself. I'm telling you, the greater the glory, the greater manifestation of who God is in your life. The more you manifest God in your life and what God is doing in your life, God is doing this. Man, God, can you believe what God, God is doing some great things in my life right now. God is blessing me at every single turn. What do you do? You're glorifying God. What happened? It just keeps coming and it keeps coming. And that's why Dr. Savelle talks about, man, the favor of God just comes on me and overtakes me. And everywhere I go, you see the favor. What is he doing? He's talking about the favor of God. He's not talking about Jerry Savelle. And you start talking about the glory of God and the glory of God will start manifesting in your life, in your wife, in your children, yeah. in your husband, yeah. in your finances, in your job situation. Why? Because it can't help but manifest itself when you manifest it. Yes. <laughs> make, your, make God bigger than your situation that you're going through right now. Yeah. Keep glorifying God. Keep giving glory to God. Yeah. Just glorify God. You know what? God's got a way. 
I don't, you don't have to, well, how are you going to do it? That's not my job. God just said that I will supply all of your needs, and I need this right now, so he's supplying I don't know how, he's doing it, okay? Amen. Your family can look at you, your boss can look at you, people can look, but you got to have confidence that, you know what, I believe that I receive when I pray, and I pray because I know that I'm the righteous of God, and the fervent, effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Well, who do you think you are? I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus has reconciled me back into himself by the blood that he shed on that cross. Amen. 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 And if you're having trouble remembering all that, just pull your Bible out and start looking for it. Amen. Just open your, open your iPhone or your pad or your whatever you've got that you want and just start highlighting those scriptures and bringing them back to you. Come on, devil, you want some of this? And replay. Hey, come on. Amen. Start replaying what God has said about you. Let the devil know who you are in Christ Jesus and who the greater one is that is on the inside of you, no matter what you feel like. At times you got to flip it out, and sometimes you got to just start praying. You might not know what else to do, but you know what? If you start praying in the Holy Ghost, you're praying the perfect will of God for your situation. So if you don't know what else to do, start praying. If you ain't got the Holy Ghost, get it tonight before you get out of here because you don't want to leave home without it. Amen? Come on. It's a tool. It's a gift to the body of Christ. And it edifies you and it builds you up. But it also prays out that perfect will of God for your situation that you're going through. Amen? Amen. And you and I need it. Say, I need it. I need it. Man, isn't this, I'm excited. Are y'all having fun yet? Yes. All right. So let's look at, um, I got, I've, I've quoted some of this. But go to 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. I'm going to start reading it while you're looking for it. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself. So God put us back in a right relationship with him. What does that mean? God originally had us made up like this. This is so important because Satan is the God of, the wor of this world system, but he's not the God of my world. Because I'm no longer in the world system. I'm in God's system. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. You better have that revelation. Because if not, you'll let the devil do whatever he wants to in your own life. Well, he's the God of this world. Not your world. That's it. Recognize Jesus bought back what the devil stole from, from us in the garden. He bought that back. And he reconciled us back into God and put us right back in a right relationship with him like God intended for it to be from the very, very beginning. Now, he needs you and I to exercise our authority here on the earth and put Satan where he belongs, and that's underneath our feet. Come on. You've got to resist him. Come on. Resist him. Man, I, I, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in this. Defense wins championships. And you know what? Defense is just a gut check. That's a bottom line. When it comes to playing, it's just who's going to get in the middle of it and, go, and not going to give up. Amen. That's what it is. And that's what you have to do with the devil. You, 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 you mess with the wrong man. That's, what you, that's got to be your attitude where Satan is concerned in an area of your life. Stop letting him whip you around and make you feel like you're this little when you're, the greater one lives on the inside of you. When God Almighty has given you his DNA. Yes. Remind him of who you are. And this scripture right here is what we're doing that with. Okay. And then he's given you a ministry. Say, I have a ministry. Say, I, say it like you mean I have a ministry. Okay. All right. Your job and my job is to reconcile other people. Let other people know that, you know what? God did it for me, but he also did it for you. You know what? You can whoop Satan just like I whoop Satan. Why do I have a smile on my face? How come I come to work the way I do? It's because I got Jesus. Yes. Bottom line. That's right. And he's in me. He's with me. He never leaves me nor forsakes me. I'm a winner, not a wiener. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses. You know what a trespass is? I, how many of y'all, no, I don't know if y'all did this growing up, but when I was a kid, okay, we roamed all over the place, man. Just got on our bikes or took off. Didn't matter. We had a pond behind the house. We had neighbors. And you know what? We want to go fishing. We weren't supposed to go fishing over there. We want to go hunting. We weren't supposed to go hunting in the place that we went hunting. But you know what? We went anyway. You know what that was? That's called trespassing. And we knew what we were doing when we did it. Come on. So this is what he says. 
he's, he, Jesus, n will not, because of what Jesus did on the cross, he's not imputing your trespasses against you. Amen. That's an awesome thought. Yes. Come on. So even though you knew you shouldn't have did what you did, come on. Yeah. God said, I, I, I covered that too. Yes. Well, I was a believer and I was still, what well, doesn't matter. He's not imputing your trespasses against you. Amen. That's pretty cool. Amen. So you don't have no excuse. Stand up and be who you created to be. Amen. Amen. Stand strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Amen. Amen. He's done this for me. He's done this for you. He knew you and I were going to mess up. Right. And if my mom caught me doing what I wasn't supposed to, I got, I got it whooping. Yeah. It's just the bottom line. That's all right, though. It's teaching me, guiding me, and directing me. God's teaching and guiding and directing you. So just dust yourself off and keep going. They didn't do it because they didn't love me. They did it because they loved me. Yes. I don't know why I'm preaching this way, but y'all just bring it out of me. All right. Uh, Hath committed unto the world the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are the ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled. You need to be reconciled unto God. Yes. Just remind yourself, I am reconciled unto God. For he that he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. Say that. I am, I am the, righteousness the righteousness of God. Of God. Think about that, right? In Christ Jesus. Amen. Say, in Christ Jesus. Amen. you got to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Or you, this don't ever com compute with you. Once you make Jesus the Lord of your life, this should register with you. Brother Copeland says, through our traditional thinking, we have confused righteousness with holiness. We think righteousness is the way you act, but this is not true. Holiness is your conduct. Righteousness is what you are. You are the nature of God. Whew. Isn't that good? Let's go to Romans 12.2. I'm going to read this from two translations, the Passion Translation and the King James Translation. I, am, I really enjoy the Passion Translation. That's a really neat translation. Stop imitating the ideals, this is in the Passion Translation, and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. What you thinking? Anybody, people ask you that, what you thinking? I don't, I don't know. You know, what you thinking? You know, they, there's times where your thought process is going in a direction that you don't need them going in. Right. right? You got to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Part of the obedience of Christ is I am the righteousness of God in Christ. So when you start thinking, oh, man, will I ever get, no, stop that. You're already there. Now, you might not naturally, if you can't see yourself on the inside, you'll never see yourself on the outside. Come on. Pastor Justin talked about getting pregnant with what God has in store for you. Are you, or is, it, is it due season? You know, when that baby's due, it comes. Right. Reality check. Okay? Yeah. All right? Due season. All right? And it's got to get, that's the way it needs to be. This needs to be on the inside of you that you are the righteousness of God. Say, I am. The righteousness, the righteousness of God, of God. In, Christ in Christ Jesus. So reformation of how you think. This will empower you. Empower you. Yes. Are you feeling like you don't, you're powerless behind the situations that you're facing right now? This thought price will empower you. Man, the greater one lives on the inside. Man, for you single women, there's a man living on the inside of you. <laughs> and his name is Jesus. Yes. Come on. And greater is he that is in you than any man you're going to find out here. Seriously, if you don't find that intimacy in him, you'll never find what you're looking for out here. And that goes both ways, man. God is the lover of your soul first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek him first. All the other things will be added unto you. Amen? Glory to God. All right. So, hmm. Empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect, and perfect in, the, in his eyes. 
Romans 12, 2, and this is the King James. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. There it is again, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Conform is to be similar to or like. Conformed is agreement. What are you conforming to? What are you similar to? What are you like? Ask yourself those questions. What do you want to be like? The way you change the way you're conformed, you have to change the way you think. And the, the way you change the way you, you got to transform it, there's got to be an exchange here that takes place. Okay? If you, if you don't like what you're looking at in the mirror, if you don't like what you're looking at in your job situation, change it. How do you change it? You change it on the inside before you ever change it on the outside. That's why, that's why uh, Terry and her, all of her books, Think Big, Dream Big, all of her things about like, what? You, can, you want your life to be a different life? you got to start thinking about what you want rather than just thinking about what you are. Right? Okay, th this is biblical right here. Okay, this is what God's trying to tell us. So don't be similar to, to or like the world. Don't be in agreement with the world either. It's important. It's, it's, it's a, you have to watch yourself because the world will set a standard and you'll go, oh, okay, that's, I guess that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Debt, for instance. Come on. It's just the world standard. Everybody else is doing it. That's what you heard in school. Everybody else is doing it. Smoke a joint. Everybody else is doing it. Come on. I love you. I do. And what you want is God's best for your life. Yes. You and I, what God wants is his best for your life. Yes. And it takes faith to get there. So when you see in God's word his best, that you will lend unto many nations and borrow from none, that needs to be your thought process. Okay, my goal then, don't think like the rest of the world, everybody's in debt. You just got to be in debt, at least in your house and your cars. That's just part of it. And that's, no, it's not. Come on. Slap down, reset, find out what the Word of God says about it, and go after the Word of God. You're either conforming to the world or you're conforming to the Word. Because right. yeah. the borrower is always servant to the lender. The only one I want to serve is Jesus. Hey, man, hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. What are we doing? We're being transformed. You know, and, and the thing is, is don't even be moved. Even if you're sitting there and say, say for instance, you have some debt in your, so what? Don't think like that. Not a, your thought process, I'm out of debt. I'm out of debt. I'm out of debt. Even if you got a mound of it sitting at home right now, you see yourself out of debt. Come on, you're never going to get there until you start seeing yourself there. So start speaking it out of your mouth. I'm out of debt. Hmm, glory to God, I'm out of debt. I owe no man anything but the debt of love. You're confessing that. It's the same thing with healing. Well, your thinking has got to change. Well, everybody gets sick. No, stop that. By his stripes, you either were healed or you weren't. I was, and I'll stay. Amen? Come on, that's got to, no matter what you even feel like. Pastor Nat and I were talking about uh, something the other day, and we were, we were talking about a revelation of the understanding that it's a whole lot easier to build a house when there's calm, peaceful, beautiful days like today than to try to build a house when there's a hurricane going on and the water is flooding and come on, the winds are boisterous and everything else. So what are, what are, what are we talking about? We're talking about your personal, what your life looks like. Start building it right now in the peaceful calm right now in church. Start thinking beyond where you are right now and start believing for what God's said about you in his word. The more you to do that constantly so that when all hell does break loose outside in the world, it doesn't affect you. That's, it's, it's developing on the inside of us. We've got to get strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And it takes us renewing our mind to what his word says and not conforming ourselves to what the world says. That's what he's talking about. We've got to change the way we think. And what you do is you change it according to whatever the word of God says about you. So when he says you're the righteousness of God, you just, you know, I don't care what grandma tells you or how many, how many times she's been to church. <laughs> just, I, I love grandma too. I, got, I had great grandparents. 
I'm just, my grandparents are amazing. Awesome. But the reality of it is, if they say something contrary to this word, I'm going with the word. I'm going to keep loving them and love on them and, and, and hug them and, and tell them how wonderful and beautiful, but I'm not going to get in agreement with what they're saying because it doesn't line up with what the word God says. Hallelujah. It's exciting. I don't know why I went there, but I did. Hallelujah. <laughs> Transform to be changed in form, appearance, or character. Change into the form of God, uh, God's appearance, of God's character, and of God. Isn't that cool? You're children of God. Jesus will, this is another Brother Copeland, uh, conform completely to the will of God. They walk together. They work together in total harmony. This is how believers are to live with God. Not his will deforming ours, nor our will bucking against his, but both wills conform to each other. Conformity with God is, much high, is a much higher way of life than just merely being submitted to God. Come on. All right. That is so good. I don't want to just, well, okay, if you say so, then I'll do it. How, how, much, how much joy does that bring you when your kid says that to you? <laughs> oh, you, oh, you tell me, that, oh, that's what I'm going to do. That's what submission is. The reality, man, yeah. Oh, is that the best thing to do, Mom? Yeah, okay, that's what I want to do. Right? Yeah. Don't you? <laughs> There's times when you look at that word, you go, really, Lord? But you know what? He's already said, you can do all things through me, <laughs> especially if it's in the word. <laughs> Come on. Well, it's times we've got to stir ourselves up, and, you know, just gird ourselves up strong. Amen. <laughs> the revelation that God's not going to ask us to do something that we're not capable of doing. Amen. And it's wonderful. And you know what's so cool is he meets every single one of us exactly the, where we are right now. Just real reality. He's going to meet you where you are. He's going to meet me where I am. And he's going to hold, his goal is to take us to new, new heights, to new levels, to, 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 uh, to a lifestyle that's better than what our, ours is right now. I had, a, I had an opportunity years ago. It was a good one of my, my actually my best friend from high school. And, uh, We'd, uh, we'd done a lot of things together, and uh, we were walking around. Our, I may have shared this testimony before, but it bears repeating because I think you need to hear this. Because I think so many times people think they're disgracing their parents or their heritage or who, they, who, who their parents were or their grandparents or what their parents did or what. You know, I'm actually a minister in a denomination. My dad was a pastor for 40 years in a denomination that I'm not involved in anymore. And my dad and I love each other, and we're some of our best cheerleaders for each other. Isn't that good? Yes. And he looked at me years ago, and he says, Rick, I never thought in a million years that my son would actually, and he goes, Ball, my dad's not a crier. I've seen him cry three times in my life. This is one of them. He got choked up. And he says, I never thought in a million years my son would actually be ministering to me. Amen. And the Lord was having, you know, I was ministering. And, but it, what, it, what it was is this. I'll go back to the, the walk I was having with my best friend from high school. And we're walking around, and he's, uh, he's an athletic director now at a very big school, and, and he and I are walking around a, a, a football field. And we'd walk on Fridays, and we're just talking and just talking. And what we'd only talk about is just what God's doing in our life on Fridays. Not business, not work, not anything. How's, how's family? How's mom? How's dad? How's your wife? How's your kids? How are you doing? What's going on? That's all we did for an hour on Fridays. And we would go for these walks. And we went for a walk one day. And, and at the time, Cassie and I were doing a lot of outreaches and just going nonstop. So there's about, I guess, about uh, 12, 12 weeks in a summer. Isn't that about right? About 12 weeks in a summer. I don't know a teacher may be able to tell me. But we did about 10 or 11 camps in one summer. And so you can imagine what our schedule looked like. So we are doing these sports camps. And... Uh, but God was doing some awesome things in my hometown. And I mean, we were seeing, man, just God do great things in the lives of kids and, and at all levels, college, uh, professional, everything else. And we're walking around and we're just having fun talking. He says, Rick, man, he laughed. He said, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to outdo your dad? 
You know, my dad has done a lot of great things and is very well known in our hometown and they've done things for him and he's, he's done some great things. And I'm walking with him and uh, I, I, as, as Greg asked me that question, we're walking and I said, Greg, I said, uh, it'd be a sin not to. And I'll go back to the question they asked me, are you trying to outdo your dad? And I said, it would be a sin not to. I said, because everything my dad did was for me and, my, and the rest of our kids. He provided a life for us that his family, he was the first person in, out of 14 kids in his family, go to college, get a degree, did some milestones, did some amazing things there in that whole entire area, did some just great things. But he did it because he saw us and wanted to make sure whatever he did in his life was something that he gave us a better life than what he had. So for, and what am I saying this about? Because the generations that we have before us, that have gone before us, the, the, the Kenneth E. Hagans, the, the Oral Roberts, the, you know, the Savelles, the, the, you know, the people that have gone before us in so many different realms. You go back to John G. Lake and you go back to all the ministers, uh, you know, that have Smith Wigglesworth that did so many great things for God. And, and you and I have got to understand that we're just as righteous as they were. We have just as much a calling on our lives as they do. We've been given the same ministry that they were given. And it's, it would be a sin for us not to take it to a higher level than what they took it to. That's why God said the, the glory of this latter house will be greater than the former. What is he, what is he saying? You and I, our parents shouldn't be, and you should be able to take your, the life that your parents have given you, take it to another level. And if you don't have spiritual parents, that's okay. Where you are right now, you're taking your life and being here tonight and being here on, t on TV or watching by way of internet. <laughs> what are you doing? You're fueling yourself to make your life better so the generation that comes after you will have a better revelation of who God is. You and I should surpass the saints of old. The Pauls and the Peters and the Johns, come on, that were in the Bible. Amen. We're supposed to be writing the last book of Acts. Amen. You and I are, and it comes by faith, and that faith has got to first be in who we are in Christ Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. He's paid for it. We've got to have that confidence that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can, do, and don't let anybody tell you any different. That's right. The only people that will tell you that they can't is the ones that never done anything. Yeah. Come on. Well, you know, that's exactly right. You know, because you never did. Right? So you know what? Read the Bible. Yes. And do what God says. Amen? <laughs> See, Satan, in 2 Corinthians, you don't have to turn there, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, Satan, who was the God of this world, blinded their minds. That's his whole job. Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Who's he going to devour? The ones that are weak in the mind? Well, you know. Well, no, stop. Control that. You have the power and the ability to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. The obedience of Christ is you. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. There is therefore now no condemnation, according to Romans chapter 8. One, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I'm in Christ Jesus. I stay there. I live. I abide. I have my life in Christ Jesus. Romans 1.17 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto the salvation, to everyone that what? That believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. You're going to see yourself getting stronger and stronger in who you are in Christ Jesus as your faith continues to be fueled. Amen. It's so important, you know, to develop something, you've got to continue to do it. I was talking with the, uh, the football coach, the new football coach at uh, North Crowley High School today, and we were just talking about the fundamentals of, of sports in, in general. And he was quoting another great coach that has won multiple, multiple national championships, and he <clears throat> was talking about just the simplicity of doing the things that nobody else wants to do. Just 
the reality of it. Joe, uh, Joe, everybody knows Joel Osteen. Everybody knows John Osteen. There's a lady by the name of Dodie Osteen who was John's wife. She's still alive today. And you know why she's alive? Now listen to this. She outlived her husband. Over 40 years ago, she was told she'd, she wouldn't live another 30 days. She took the Word of God and she stood on that Word and she kept that Word. But you know what? To this day, if you talk to her today, every single day, she still meditates on her healing Scriptures. Amen. Come, on. Come on. Do you eat every day? Man, powerful. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to miss a meal. What are you talking about? You know? <laughs> what the reality? Well, don't miss the Word in your life every day, especially if you have an issue in an area of your life. So for her, the Satan that came to her and where healing was concerned, so what does she do still today? She takes out her card. She takes out, she reads that same word Amen. that healed her over 40 years ago is keeping her healed today. Amen. Mm. So your battle is between your head. Because you know what? If you don't, then you'll think, well, I guess, oh, it came back. No, it doesn't. It don't have a right to be there. Right. Come on. Come on. Yeah, well, that's hard. Well, you know what? It's... Brother Jesse says it best. He says this. He says, you know how you spell success? W-O-R-K. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Exciting. The reality of it is that he blesses the hand of the diligence. So if you're going to see your life blessed in any area of your life, you're going to have to be diligent about what that is in your life. If you've got an issue, in your, you're going to have to fight it. Yes. And then stand on top of it like, you want some more of me? Right. Come on. The devil doesn't play fair. But you don't have to either. You've got the answers. It's like, you know, you, you know what? You've got an open book test and you don't get in trouble for using your book. You can have a cheat sheet too with you. Just pull out that note card if you have to in the middle of the day. Hey, man. Oh, what was that? Oh, yeah, God. I got you. Come here, devil. You want some of this? Come on. And you go whooping him with what that word says about the promise that you have where the word of God is concerned. Because all of his promises are yes and amen. Amen. Glory to God. Okay, so um, <laughs> Hebrews 5, 11 through 14, it says this. I'm going to pick up. Yeah, let me just read this. Of whom, because this is important because I think that some people think it's just not fair. That person's more developed. A muscle's a muscle. You know, all of us have the same muscles. But some are more developed than others. Amen? Come on. Mr. Universe has the same amount of muscles as, as you do, Philip. Really. But he has just pumped his up a whole lot more and worked his out a whole lot more that they're a whole lot bigger than mine. Or yours, for that matter. <laughs> of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing, for when, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So you got to go back to grade school. Huh. Again. It's like as Dr. Zell said a couple weeks ago, you're going to talk to us about words again. Yeah, your words have everything. Life and death are in the power of your tongue, not my tongue for you. They're in the power of your tongue, so you're going to eat the fruit of whatever you're saying out of your mouth. The first principles are oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. You've got to go back to the bottle. Come on. I used to take a pacifier. We'd give a pacifier to our players when they became wham wans oh, Come on, the high school kid. Here, you're going to wham wham Here, put that in your mouth. They stopped wham wham real quick, amen? Because they ain't going to practice with the pacifier in their mouth, not at 16, 17 years old. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Hmm. Huh. Yes, words are important. Yeah, Pastor Rick, I believe that too. Yes. Come on. We, we should take great delight in encouraging one another to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, but also in our words. We should be excited about that, man. Do you want me to get in agreement with you about that? Yes, if it's good. Come on, and if it's the Word of God. You know, did you really mean, oh, I didn't. Oh, thank you for touching. Come on, helping each other. What do we want to come? We want to come. I, I like to get around people that push me to the next level. You know, that are going to encourage me, that are going to challenge me to be better at what I do. Amen? And who I am. So we should want that for each other. Be skillful in godly wisdom.
I got a lot more. I got a lot of more. But you know what? I better figure out what we're going to do because we're almost done. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. I got a couple questions for you, and then we'll wrap this up. All right. The question you need to answer for yourself is what are you conformed to? Amen. Just ask yourself. Write that, you can write that down. What am I conformed to? I have to ask myself those questions. What do I spend most of my time thinking about? Talking about? Because that's what I'm conformed to. Testimony from Dr. Javel, he realized that all he was ever getting was motorcycle stuff, and he realized that he must talk about motorcycles more than he talks about anything else. So that you know what he did? He stopped talking about motorcycles. Not that motorcycles are bad, but he wants to talk about God more. Because that, he wants God to be first in his life, not motorcycles. Hey, just a reality check. What are we conform? I'm just I have to ask myself that. I'm asking myself this question too, okay? What am I conformed to? The world or the word? I've got to, I've got to make a decision here. What am I going to conform myself to? It's, it's a question I've got to ask. What and you've got to ask yourself. I've got to ask myself, what am I conformed to? The second question I have to ask myself is, where is my faith? It's a meter check. I have to be real. I have to be face reality for myself. Where is my faith right now? There's times that Pastor Cassie and I start believing for something, and we realize we're not right there yet. So God help us. We're going to spend some time developing our faith where that project is concerned in our life, so that we can get to the point where that's easy. And we've done that with numbers of things in our lives. Come on. But it's it's it's, it's evaluating, and it's it's not a bad thing. Where is my, being honest with myself. The Bible says, judge yourself lest you be judged. So I have to judge myself going, okay, where am I right now? I might not be ready to believe God to be debt free where my vehicle and my house are concerned or whatever it is. But you know what? I can believe God that I won't be in debt on anything else. Come on. I'm not going to borrow money for my furniture anymore. Whatever it is. I'm going to believe God for this. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's areas in your life, my life, that you and I have got to do in our, in our righteousness, evaluate myself. Where is my faith? Am I, do I really believe that I am the righteousness of God in Christ? Do I really believe that nothing can separate me from the love of God that's put me in right relationship with God? Nothing can separate me from that. No matter what I do, I am the right, I am a child of the Most High God. The last thing is, <clears throat> what are we going to do with righteousness? What are we going to do with our righteousness? What are we going to do with it? <clears throat> and the reason I ask that is because if I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, when I lay hands on somebody... It's as if I'm an extension. I become an extension of God. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. When I begin to talk to somebody, I'm talking out of love to that somebody that I'm talking to because I am now, I am what? I am the righteousness of God. I'm no longer myself anymore. I become a conduit for God to, to release whatever he needs to release on the earth through me. I have got to have the confidence that God can use me in any way, form, or fashion that he needs to. That, I, that my wallet is not just my wallet. My wallet is whatever God needs it to be that day if I walk into a situation that I have the ability to be the blessing that he created me to be. Come on. Come on. Do, you, do you see, when you have a, this is what I'm saying is, we're, oh, and, and, the, and there's a scripture, and I want to I close with this scripture right here. The Bible says, awake to righteousness. Awake to to righteousness. Awake to righteousness. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. And sin not. You and I have got to wake up. Amen. You see, what we're doing today, what you're doing today shouldn't be done. You know what most, this is what our society does is do things within your means. You know what God says? Go beyond your means. Because if you can do things just because of what you can do, then where's God in the creation? Yes. Find something. 
That answered my question today, man. <laughs> Find something that God says to do, and you gotta go, Lord, how? <laughs> That's what you need to do. Amen. I had an opportunity one day to sit and listen to a, a CEO of a very, very, very multi, over hundreds of millions of dollars worth of, of uh, constant and debt free ministry that uh, I had the opportunity and he said, you know, the cool thing about what I do is I'm a business, I'm a businessman and I run the ministry, but the reality is most of the things that they tell me that we're going to do, there is no possible way in our budget that we can do at the upcoming year. Mm-hmm. Almost everything that we do, the year in front of us, there's no way that our budget can meet it. But somehow, some miraculous way, it always gets why? Because they've learned how to listen to what God's telling them to do. They've learned who they are in Christ Jesus. They stay in that place of righteousness in order for God to manifest his glory in a way that they can't get the glory for what God is doing in, in, in their ministry and through them on a regular basis. So if you want to be used by God, and I want to be used by God, and we all want to be used by God, we're going to have to continuously wake ourselves up to, you know what, God's wanting me to do something bigger than myself. Amen. And the only way that I can do this, i got to recognize that I am not my own. I am bought with a price. I'm a child of the Most High God. I am the righteousness in God, of God, of God. I am God's righteousness. Amen. Not my own abilities. Not what I, it's what, what I will let God do through me. Amen. What am I willing to allow God to to do through me. And if I will wait to that understanding that I have been made the righteousness of God, not because of works, lest any man should boast, but by grace through faith, my faith has got to get bigger. Amen? All of our, my faith is, I'm telling you, my faith has got to get bigger. We all have to get bigger where our faith is concerned so that God can use us the way God intended for us to be used on the face of the earth. Amen? Did you receive that tonight? Yeah. Say, I am. The righteousness of God God. in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 Pastor Cassie, glory to God. Glory to God. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Mm, Just say glory to God. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Right? Because it's because of his blood that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's because of the blood of Jesus. It's not because of what we do. Amen? I think it was John G. Lake. He always wore a suit. And he would look at himself in the morning. I don't remember exactly what he would say. I was trying to find that quote. But he'd look at himself in the morning. He'd say, everywhere that suit of clothes goes, God goes. Because God lives in that man. Everywhere. Everywhere. That'll make you stand a little taller. There's no slouching when you got God in you. Amen? And everybody's like, oh, I need to sit up a little straighter. Glory to God. And you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So am I. So why are we living below what God wants us to? Now you're like, oh, don't touch my finances. Don't touch my comfortable little house because I'm happy there and I don't have to believe God for anything more. Come on. We've got to think bigger. We're believing for, we call it grace place, because it's going to be by grace that we obtain this property and this home and this land. And when we get it, y'all are all going to come. We're going to have a big church fellowship out there. Amen. I can see it. The Lord told me, I guess back in December, he said, start picturing yourself. So I started picturing uh, worship team parties out there, church fellowships. You can go get lost on that land. How about that? Y'all ready? We'll serve good food there too. But it'll be by grace that we obtain it. But then our our heart's desire, and we do this even now in the home that we're in, is that people that come, stay there, will receive grace. Amen? Amen? We have a vision for it. And the Lord told me about a month ago, he said, "You you better start getting tenacious about that. He's like, I need you to obtain that. In fact, no, it was a couple of weeks ago. We were singing, I call you Father. I got a few minutes, right? 
we were singing, I call you father. And that part where he says, I see you standing out beyond the shore. And I could, every time I say that, I see Jesus. He's like right above the camera. And I just fix my eyes on that. It's just, it, it's so real to me. And in that moment, and you, you might say, well, why is he talking to you about a house? That's not very holy. Are you kidding me? If that's the spoils that he has for me, that's holy stuff. That's, that's my land. That's his land that he's purposed and set aside for me. And to just slough it off like nothing? Are you kidding me? That's like saying, well, I'm not worthy. Are you kidding me? Yes, I am because I'm a child of the Most High God. And I could just see him there. And he's like, and it was in that moment, you know, even sometimes I know when we're preaching, if you've ever taught, sometimes you're teaching and in the midst of it, you get a nugget, right? Well, sometimes when I'm leading worship, I'll get a nugget. And I'm like, ooh, okay, hold on just a second, everybody. I'm getting, right? And he said, I need you to obtain that land. I need you to step up your faith. I need you to get tenacious about it. I need you to get passionate about obtaining that because that's that's mine for you. That's my gift for you. And I believe there's some dreams that are on the inside of you, some visions for something greater financially, be it a home, be it businesses, be it investments, that you're just kind of saying, well, everything's good right now. I'm paying my bills. Everything's good. I'm able to give some and I'm, I'm happy, right? Why stop? Amen? Jehoshaphat, 2 Chronicles 20. I'm just going to just say this because I want you to see that God cares about your finances. And God cares whether or not you're poor or you're rich. That's a, that's a thing with God. And this is a Word of Faith church. And Word of Faith people believe in prosperity. So this is a prosperity church. So if you're new, welcome. Welcome. This is a good news. This is the gospel. The gospel to the poor person is that you don't have to be poor anymore. Amen. So glory to God. This is how big God is. So Jehoshaphat, they they were running up to something pretty big. They had a lot of people coming up against them. And so he sought the Lord. The Lord said, the battle's not yours. It's mine. So just sing. He said, the praiser's out. He said, just shout and praise the Lord. I tell the worship team, we're the front line of the army, right? Just sing. I got this, right? After God had it, this is what God had set aside for them. And this is Second uh, Chronicles twenty twenty five. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil, say spoil, They found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering up the spoil. Brother Brother Hagen has a message that we listen to all the time. And you get to hear him. He'll be saying, gathering up the spoils. I'm gathering up the spoils. Some of us need to gather up some spoils that Jesus already paid for us. Amen? Amen. You know what my daughter said back in January? Oh, she's 12 years old. You know what she said? She goes, Mama, I was praying over Grace Place. You know, thank you, God, for Grace Place and the steps to it. You know what she said? You know what Jesus showed me? That when he tore the veil, when he died on that cross, that Grace Place was already bought for us. A 12-year-old gets righteousness. Right? Amen? Amen? So it was done at the cross. Whatever you're believing for or whatever you've put on the back burner was done at the cross. It's time to engage our faith. Amen? Engage is a big word in this church. It's time to set our faith in motion and obtain what God asked for us. You got to get bigger. You got to think bigger. Pastor Annette was saying a few months ago, we got to start praying bigger prayers. Amen. Big. Say think big. Say dream big. Glory to God. I'm I'm really excited. I'm a firm believer, and the Lord's really ministered to me this week, especially. I'm a firm believer that the things that we go through, the tough, some of the tough times, some of the hurdles that we haven't yet got over, are a direct result of our lack of understanding our identity in Christ. Because if you knew who you were, if I know who I am, if I know who my daddy is, if I know who Jesus is in me, Uh 
then 24 acres is nothing. 7,500,000 square or 7,500 square foot home is nothing. And that's just the beginning. That's just the beginning. God's put vision on the inside of you. Start obtaining it and take those baby steps. Amen. Start sowing those seeds. One more little nugget. You, you guys start asking the Lord as I'm talking. You start asking the Lord what he wants you to give tonight. Um, I'd encourage you to sow something. Sow what you can. Amen. He's not asking you to sow anything more than what you have. Amen. Um, about two years ago now, Rick and I set our hearts. You know what? We're going to stop just focusing on believing God for our needs being met and, and what we, you know, bills pay and all that. We're going to just, we're going to seek you first, the kingdom of God, set our hearts to sow. We're going to sow. We're not, we're not even going to, and then Jesse DePlan has spoken to my husband last uh, September at the biker weekend. And he said, and just out of the blue, he turned to Rick and he said, Rick, God keeps the books. God keeps your books. He knows every seed you've sowed. He hasn't forgot one, not one penny that you've sowed. God keeps the books. Amen? So we, we chose, this is about two years ago, I think now. We just chose, you know what? We're just going to give. We're going to stop thinking about, well, we got we to make sure that. And then we got to oh, rearrange that. No, we just said, no, when God says give, we're going to give. And you know what? We have increased mightily in two years. Glory to God. Yes. So you want increase? Just stop thinking about what you need because that's not what we're supposed to think about. We're supposed to think about, God, what do you want? How can I get involved in what you're doing? And you know what? God says, yeah, all right. I'm not only going to supply your needs, but I'm going to give you seeds because I know I can trust you with that finances to filter it into the places that I need it into. Amen. So we got to stop thinking here in this earth. We've got to lift our affections to the Father. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift our affections to you tonight. Where our finances, where money, I'm just going to call it what it is. Finance is a pretty word. Where money is concerned, Father, it doesn't have our heart. It is a tool to increase your kingdom. And we thank you, Father, that you supply seed to the sower. So we receive seed we reach out and we receive from heaven seed to sow. And we thank you for giving us complete direction on where to sow it, when to sow it, how much to sow. Because we know you got all that other stuff that concerns us taken care of. We just bless you. We just trust you. We're your children. We're heirs to the throne. We're heirs to the kingdom of heaven. Glory to God. We're your children. We're filled with God tonight. We just bless you, Lord. And Lord, I just speak the fullness of the blessing of our every seed sown tonight. I ask you, Father, to wow your people in this place tonight. Wow them. Let immediate harvest come in the name of Jesus. Because some are reaching out and they're stepping by faith and they're sowing a little more than they might have. They're a little bit out of their comfort zone. So Lord, I ask you, just in the name of Jesus, just... <laughs> Pour out your blessing upon them where there's not room enough in their own bank accounts and their own purses and their own wallets and their own savings accounts. There's not room enough to receive it. They got to give some more away. We just thank you, Lord, for it. We just dare to believe your word and we dare to trust it. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We praise you, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Say amen. All right, there's text to give. If you're given by way online, you can go to our website and there's uh, just follow all the prompts. Hallelujah. Amen. Are there any young adults in here? What is it? Yeah, yeah, me. Right. <laughs> Someone pulled me aside on Sunday and said, I didn't know you had kids. You don't look old enough to have kids. I was like, glory to God, there must be like a airbrush that back between me and the congregation. <sighs> Thank God for hair color. Um, Okay, so young adults, we call it YAW, Young Adults Heritage. We meet Friday, I say we because Rick and I help with that. We meet Friday, May 18th, say this Friday, at 7 p.m. And we have the cool opportunity to have Pastors Justin and Annette ministering to our young adults. Isn't that cool? Hallelujah. 
I'm excited about that. So see our, go to our website, check out um, all the details of where that is, the location of that. That's at seven o'clock on Friday. Young couples too. Young couples too. Yeah. It, well, it's young adults. You don't have to be single, but you can be single. If you're single, come. If you're a young adult and you're married, come. All right. Okay, girlfriends, mother-daughter spa day is this Saturday, May 8th, May 19th at 10 o'clock a.m. Once again, go to our website, check out our, if you, if you haven't been on our website, you need to go check it out. That's where everything is. So if you need help doing that, then find one of our greeters out there. They'll help you figure out where to go on our website. Thrive Groups is this Sunday at 5.30 p.m. If you don't have a Thrive Group, see one of our greeters. We'll hook you up. You, you want to go to those. Those are fun, okay? Uh, Dr. Savelle will be ministering Sunday, May 27th at 10 a.m. And then that night, we have our visitation, our night of worship, where we just do whatever we, whatever God wants, and we just have fun in the Holy Ghost. And what's really cool is we get to have ice cream afterwards because we're celebrating Memorial Day. Yay, right? So you want to come to that. There's also baptism. So if you're interested in getting baptized, if you have questions about baptism, ask one of our greeters. It will take play the baptisms are going to be in here I don't know which side I think this side but they'll be in here during the night of worship is that not cool so you don't want to miss it you don't want to miss the night of worship and you definitely don't want to miss ice cream so are there any first-time visitors here any first-timers all right let's stand up in the presence of the Lord hallelujah glory to God pastors Send their love to you. They were with family this week. Amen. Just ministering to their family down south. So y'all are beautiful. Y'all are full of God. (sighs) Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this word. Oh, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for pouring out your precious, pure blood. We thank you for what you did in the depths of hell. We thank you that you were raised up out of that grave. And not only that, we thank you that you ascended back into the heavenly realm. And then you didn't stop there. You gave us your name. (laughs) You, You gave us our freedom back. You gave us our righteousness back. So I just pray in the name of Jesus that as we walk out of these doors, we walk out a little taller a little strong, more stronger than we were when we came in, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we give Jesus to the world as we walk out. We love you and we bless you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We'll see you on Sunday.